You know, I always thought 3D printers were gonna change this hobby. I just didn't realize how much they were gonna change this hobby. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a look at the Elegoo Mars 3. And that's a resin 3D printer. This is an entirely different process than the standard and what you're probably familiar with and what you might even have at home FDM style filament printer. I've got a Prusa i3 Mark III Plus, an excellent FDM printer. It has printed a ton of stuff for me and it continues to print great things. For example, the start of this Jeep hard body, which uh, I think looks pretty darn good for an FDM printer. Of course, this is multiple pieces printed over dozens of hours, but it is an excellent way to print large scale stuff and it looks pretty darn good, but nothing beats the quality of a good resin printer. It's an entirely different process and it's pretty interesting. Elegoo sent me the Mars 3. I had no experience with resin printing before this printer showed up. And the second print, I was able to get intensely great quality stuff. This is a driver from Knight Customs, completely resin printed, only took a few hours to print and look at the quality, it's impossible to get better quality than this at home. And uh, this is why I think this is really gonna change this hobby again. Anyway, let me talk a little bit about the process and how easy it is to set up the Mars 3. Like any resin printer, there are a few things that you will need to make sure you are doing and safety is of the utmost importance. Resin and the types of chemicals that are being used here in this process can be toxic so make sure you have adequate ventilation in the place you're going to be printing and proper safety equipment, goggles, some type of mask, and nitrile gloves. Super important that you have those because you do not want to be handling this resin with your hands. It can be an irritant and it's pretty powerful stuff, so do be careful. If you are a youth, definitely have an adult present. And if you can, do what I do, set up the prints overnight, close the door to your workshop, and leave it to do its thing. You don't need to watch it, you don't need to be present for it, and not being present for it is probably a good idea. These fumes are not great. Okay, safety message out of the way. This is a really simple process. Maybe it's the quality of the Mars 3, uh, and you know, I'm spoiled or something, but I'm getting insanely good quality prints out of literally doing nothing other than leveling the bed. And that's something that you do have to do with this printer the first time you get it home. Uh, it's very simple. There's a nice touch screen uh, that has a really great interface and the instructions that are included are really easy to follow. So there is pretty much no way you can screw it up. It's almost idiot proof. If I can do it, certainly you can. Once you've got your print bed level, it's really down to the next part of the process. And this is where kind of the magic sort of happens and the way that these prints happen. It's not squirting goo out of a hot nozzle onto a build plate to create your items. It's actually shining UV light into this resin. And this resin is obviously a UV curing resin. That's how it works. It shines that light into this bed of UV resin that is just floating there. It's a liquid. And as the light hits it, it cures on the build plate. And then that build plate moves up ever so slightly. And then it repeats that process over and over and over again. And you end up with high quality prints like this. It's spectacular. This was built without any supports and uh, it came out just absolutely amazing. I'm using a water washable resin and that's a slightly easier cleanup process than say with uh, most of the other resins on the market. Um, there are a lot and I will get into them here in a moment, but the basics of the technology is just like I said, UV light shines a pattern onto a build plate uh, and within that build plate there is a bunch of liquid resin that gets uh, activated by the UV light and hardens on the build plate and keeps creating it in steps. They are such fine steps that you don't really see where any of those lines are. It's completely different from FDM style printing and you get much higher quality prints in about the same amount of time. Uh, it's pretty spectacular. Uh, and like I said, it might just be luck 
But with this printer, all I did was level the bed and use all the default settings and I'm getting great quality prints. I'm really blown away. Even easier is the process of slicing that model to make it work on a modern resin printer. Uh, I'm gonna pop over to the other computer here in a moment and I'm gonna show you how that software works. Let's go over there now. So this is what it looks like when you open up Chit you box. <laughs> Let's say it's Chit you box. Chai tu box, maybe. Uh, and this is a slicing program a lot like uh, Prusa Slicer or uh, any of the other ones on the market that you might be using. But it's specifically set up to work with these resin printers more than anything else. And I've already configured it to work with the Elegoo Mars 3, which is the printer that I'm showing off today. Uh, but this is really straight ahead, pretty simple. So you uh, find your files that you want to use on your drive. And I've got them here in the 3D printing section here. And uh, we're going to use um, that. Uh, what are we going to use? Let's use that grill, the Mojave grill that uh, Crawl NYC built. So open that one up here. And there it goes, plops it on the uh, the build plate, and you can rotate that around and move that whole thing. And you can see it's actually like a visual representation of the build plate from the actual printer, which is pretty cool. Um, problem number one, this is too big for this build plate. You can see that these red areas that it's highlighting here, that's where it's going to be outside of where it needs to be on the uh, build plate. So you can select that and you can rotate it. And I'm gonna start with a 45 degree rotation, uh, which is probably plenty, uh, but it might actually be a little bit too much and I'll explain why in a second. And you're thinking to yourself, holy cow, like that's a ton of supports that's gonna create. How is it gonna possibly do that? And is that cost effective? Well, it's not necessarily cost effective, but it's the only way to make it work. <laughs> so this is what it is. We've got to do it this way. Uh, okay, let's now get into the next part, which is building those supports, which can be a bit uh, challenging. It's not super easy, but there's a tab right up here, support. I'm going to go over to that. And I've already got a few things here where it's sort of like, predetermines what the type of supports are going to be and how far away from things they're going to be and all the angles. And that's just automatic. And you can choose a bunch of different ones down here at the bottom. Uh, these are all like whatever you think are going to work. And you can go in and you can just click here and stick one in. And you're like, there you go. That should be enough. <laughs> Absolutely not, of course. Uh, there is luckily a auto support system and you can just go all oh, give it all to me give me all of it yes we'll remove those supports it's going to think about it for a second and there you go it's built all the supports you'll need to to build this properly and it it works pretty well i'm pretty impressed with how easy it is to do the automatic supports you can see that provided it's in this blue rectangle it's going to print if I were to rotate, go back and rotate that and change the orientation, it probably wouldn't fit because these supports need to be within uh, a usable area. So there you go. Now that you've got all the supports, you've got your model, you can go back to uh, start and you go down here where I'm standing. Get out of the way for you here. There's a single parameter slice and that's what we're going to do. It's going to think again and uh, build this things, slice it all up into the little bits and pieces, and you get this second window here after it's done, and you can actually see the images that the printer are, is going to apply in the UV light to create this thing layer by layer by layer by layer. Those All those little dots are the supports, and all the rest of it, that's the actual grill being formed right there. Pretty neat. You can see it all happen there. And I'm just sort of scrolling through. You can do this whatever speed you like. And once that's done, you hit save, put it on a USB stick, insert it in the printer, and start printing. And I'll walk you through all the rest of that once we get back into the other room. So there you go.
This is the sort of resin that you're using when you create these prints. Uh, it does say right on there, don't get it on your skin. So definitely wear gloves when you're using this. Um, but uh, very easy to set up and get a print ready to go. Plug that USB into the uh, Elegoo Mars 3, hit print, and off you go. A few hours later, your print will come out. Just to show you the difference between the two types of prints, here's the same print done on my Prusa i3 Mark III Plus. This was at 0.10, so a pretty highly detailed uh, print, but you can definitely see the print lines, whereas in the resin print, you cannot see any lines at all. It's spectacular, the difference. And for detail pieces and decorative pieces on your scale trucks, there's no other way to go, as far as I'm concerned. If you're not scratch building it, this is how you should be doing it with a resin printer, because it just turns out phenomenal compared to an FDM print. And that's not saying the FDM print's any slouch. With a little bit of sanding, you'll get it just as good as and as smooth as this one. But to not have to do any post work after it prints, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I'm blown away. Now that that's all said, uh, there are some disadvantages uh, to uh, a resin printer, and that's mainly around the uh, post after it's printed, and that's the cleaning up of the parts and disposing of the stuff that you've used to clean those parts. So I'm using water washable resin right now. Most resins are not like this. Uh, this is a different, uh, slightly different process, and uh, it is water soluble ish. There will still be resin in your water, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but there are two different types of resin. There's water washable, and then there's the isopropyl alcohol sort of baths that you need to do. But once your print comes out of the printer, uh, it's gonna have all these supports on it. And this is what I used uh, when I was printing out the grill. Uh, it was laid on like this essentially, and it prints upside down like this. And that's sort of how it comes out of the printer. Um, when it's still soft, because resin is soft when it comes off the printer, remove all of these supports, get rid of these, uh, but don't just throw them away. You'll need to do something to them as well here in a second. Now, because it's UV curable, it is printed and it's rigid, but it needs to be cured completely. And that's where uh, one of these little things comes in handy. Uh, this is a curing booth. And uh, Elegoo makes this one as well. Uh, it's the Mercury. And what happens is there's a little base here with some uh, solar panels and a little tiny motor that rotates this, um, this base. You put your parts on there, like so. Put this lid back on and turn it on. And it's got UV lights in there. And what it will do is you can set it for a certain amount of time. I did like 10 minutes for some of the larger parts just to make sure they're completely cured. And um, yeah, that's how you cure the parts. Then they come out and they're rock solid. Well, as solid as this can be. They're still, resin is still fairly fragile. It's not gonna be as strong as say, uh, a full on FDM print, but they are gonna be pretty good. Once your printer has finished making the part, uh, you will need to remove it from the base of the, uh, the printer and uh, remove it from its supports. And once that's done, you will need to rinse the part off. If you're using water washable, obviously you can use water. Do not use running water from the sink. There is still a lot of uncured resin on the part once it is removed from the printer. And that stuff is toxic and not good for your pipes or the environment. I know that most water treatment plants probably have a UV filter going through them and would filter out any particulates, but it's just not good for the environment in general. So what you need to do once you've rinsed your part is cure all of that water. And I use the same uh, UV bath thing that I've got there and just kind of shine that light, wear eye protection, shine that light over that water and then filter it and dispose of it. That's the best way to do it. Once the resin is cured, it's pretty much okay but do make sure you do cure it. Otherwise, bad things will happen to you in the afterlife. <laughs>
If you're using a non-water washable resin, uh, isopropyl alcohol is the best way to clean those parts before curing. Uh, you'll get really excellent results that way too. Same thing with that. Uh, you can either uh, strain it and then uh, UV cure whatever is left in the strainer and just dispose of it or let that alcohol evaporate over time. I am not an expert in any of this, so I'm going to put a link right up here to someone that I do trust in terms of how they do the whole process. They're a chemist and smart, <laughs> so do what they do. All in all though, I really do think that this is going to change the hobby. Um, Westmade does a lot of parts in resin. Scalebuilt UK. This is a dashboard for the Vanquish VS410 Phoenix. So again, there are countless ways that you can use this type of resin printing and I think it really is going to change this hobby again. Seems like it, this hobby is changing all the time, which it is. But this is really fantastic. And thank you to Elegoo for sending me the Mars 3 and letting me experiment with this. I am having a blast. I think it's really super cool and a super fun process. The cleanup is a little bit of a mess and it does require more steps to do it responsibly. Uh, you could be a real jerk about it, uh, but that's just not the way I am. Uh, anyway though, uh, definitely a fun process. Definitely one that I'm going to start incorporating into all of my builds because there are a lot of fine detail stuff uh, like grills like this that you could not do nearly as well scratch build. So it's time to get back onto Fusion 360 and start making some new parts because if this is what things are gonna be like, there's no way I'm not using a resin printer from now on. Very cool process, definitely a lot of fun and I'm sure I will learn more. That said, if you are looking for a very easy to use, relatively simple process, I don't think I could recommend anything more than the Elegoo Mars 3. It's got great resolution, creates great prints straight out of the box without any fiddling. And that for me is a big thing because even with the Prusa and 3D printers on the FDM scale before, there was a lot of fiddling. I always said that it was not a science, it's still an art. Is it something that you will be looking at getting? Or are you going to be stuck in the scratch building world for all your tiny bits and pieces and accessories and drivers and everything else on your trucks? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, you wanna see more resin printing and maybe we'll do a little how-to demo, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I think that's gonna do it. I gotta get some more things on that printer. Uh, this is such a blast. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.